Good morning. John Gilkison, Aerostealth here. Um, this morning we're going to shoot a video of a PowerPoint. Um, excuse me, right in the middle of that, my PowerPoint asked me about expiring and stuff. Damn computers. Um, we're doing a PowerPoint on aerodynamics, EVs, and towing with EVs. Uh, I've been working on this for several weeks now. Uh, it's a new PowerPoint and uh, mostly I had it about 70% done but uh, it took a matter of some weeks to get some more images to flesh it out. Um, so today is um, Friday December 10th 2021. So here we go. Um, didn't mean to make you dizzy there. It's pretty good. If you get a little closer. There we are. Um, this is my first slide, of course. Um, This first slide is a uh, a low drag body form, and by that I mean uh, CD equals 0 0.10. And you can't buy this uh, car from any car maker right now, but uh, it would be capable of over 100 miles per gallon at a 100 miles per hour. And uh, it would have a boat tail, which would be de detachable. Well, right here is the, what I mean by boat tail, this back portion here in that line there. And then right over here, you would detach it. And uh, that would be for city driving. You, would, you wouldn't need it for ordinary uh, daily driving, but for uh, traveling on the highway at speeds above 50 miles per hour, it would be a good idea to have it. Um, because it would make for extended range and higher speeds possible. Here's some of the basics. Uh, coefficient of drag is a dimensionless number. That's why it's hard to get people to understand it sometimes. Um, think of a sheet of plywood as 1.0 and then the slipperier the shape that number gets less and less and less down to 0.10 right here. Um, but anyway, the, the point of this graph on the left is that all these shapes have the same aerodynamic drag. Now by that I don't mean co coefficient of drag, but coefficient of drag area. So um, in other words, this one cubic foot cube here has the same drag going through the air as this torpedo shape here that's uh, 5.17 feet in its largest extent. Um, so the moral of this uh, slide here is if you want to buy a Hummer it needs to be five times smaller than a, a regular Hummer. Um, this image on the left, on the right, pardon me, is basically just trying to explain how frontal area is determined. So you, you have a parallel light coming in and then casting a shadow in the back and you measure the square feet of that area. Um, another way to do it is just take a, a telephoto image of the front of a car from a, a great distance by I mean by that I mean more than a hundred feet or so and then you have to get a scale for the image but that's doable, and then you can figure out the frontal area that way. This is a three-dimensional model of a coefficient of drag body that's uh, 0.12 with a detachable boat tail right here, back here. And this, this boat tail actually did detach. This is a large model. This thing's about three feet long. Uh, Phil was using it... Uh, 
for wind tunnel testing. And um, he, when he was here, he took he took the tail off even. And we shot a video on that. That's been a few years back. But it's on YouTube. Check it out. These are road load graphs. Now all a road load graph is, is you have the um, speed at the bottom and the kilowatts of power along the uh, vertical axis that, that tells the power it takes to pull that body through the air. And of course it's dependent, uh, the road load graphs are dependent upon um, uh, not only the coefficient of drag but the coefficient of drag area and the weight of the vehicle, the tires, and so forth. And so over here on the left, uh, just out of a fit of whimsy, uh, Phil made me up a road load graph for a Model T. And this is hanging on the door of my library on the inside. And it's about four feet tall. And... Uh, this thing's crazy bad. Of course, Model Ts were never really driven at speeds over 40 miles per hour, so they always operated down in this part of the regime right here. But you can see at, at faster speeds, they would have been a disaster. Uh, Model T at 65 miles per hour with a, in the EV form, which would uh, only get uh, um, 46 miles per gallon. On the right is a road load graph for a 0 0.10 shape, which is about the lowest coefficient of drag that it's possible to make a vehicle. And it's capable of 130 miles per gallon at 65 miles per hour uh, in an electric vehicle form, of course. And one of the things I'm pointing out here is the 50-50 point, which is a good thing to look for on these road load graphs, on this graph is 90 miles per hour. In other words, at 90 miles per hour, um, roughly, a little over 90 miles per hour, the rolling resistance, which is in blue, is the same as the aerodynamic drag. And that tells you a lot. The, the more drag a shape has, the 50-50 point keeps moving to the left. And we'll look at that on another slide. For a regular vehicle. So a road load graph consists of basic forces affecting performance. The drivetrain, regardless of type, and by that I mean whether it's a gas engine or an electric vehicle, just, just needs to overcome two countervailing forces other than internal losses. And that's aerodynamic drag and rolling resistance. Aerodynamic drag increases with the cube of velocity and it increases significantly at speeds above 50 miles per hour. Rolling resistance increases in a linear fashion with speed. Of course, it's dependent on the, the tires and the road surface sometimes. Um, so here's a road load graph for uh, 0 0.30, which is about where most legacy car makers are. And I'm comparing it to a road load graph for 0 0.10. So you can see the difference. Now one of the things you'll notice right away is the rolling resistance really looks a lot fatter on the, on the 0 0.10 graph, but that's just because the aerodynamic drag is so much less. It proportionally looks larger. But that 50-50 point probably comes in somewhere around, um, oh, um, around 50 to 60 miles per hour uh, on a standard car, not 90. This is uh, on the Cybertruck, and I should have gotten a slide. I do have a slide of the uh, Cybertruck later, but... Uh, it's um, going to be on the second uh, video of this um, trailer towing. Today we're just going to cover everything up to trailers. Um, the Cybertruck has a low coefficient of drag body form of 0.30. That's low for a truck, not low for a car. 
And we figured a, a road load graph for it with 36 square feet of frontal area. And at 70 miles per hour, this uh, translates to a, a load of 27 kilowatts or 36 square feet of frontal area body form and a CDA of 10.8. And I'm saying this translates into nearly 79 miles per gallon. And I'm not really including um, uh, internal losses here. It's probably more like about 72 miles per gallon as this figure here is not 385, but probably around 400. This is not bad for a truck. We approached this with our Ford F-150 with an aero lid and a boat tail appliance. Of course, that was a gas truck. And there it is. In 2014, I bought a Brett Herndon aero lid and uh, he had a boat tail for me, which at 80 miles per hour, this tr gas truck was capable of 20 miles per gallon. And this was about five years before the Cybertruck was ever introduced. And this Basically, the back half of this truck is a cyber truck. Um, the front's not as important as a lot of people think. Uh, blunt shapes are fine for the front of a vehicle. Here's a road load graph for our 2019 Chevrolet Bolt. And this is a chart of the raw power consumption. And I'm going to reference this now so you can remember it later. But it says the power is 18.61 kilowatts at 70 miles per hour. You can see here, we can see this one better. Somewhere between 50 and 60 miles per hour is where the, around 50 miles per hour probably is where the 50-50 point is, not 90. Be nice if it was 90. So, based on this road load graph, we made uh, this uh, power consumption into uh, uh, tables and laminated them into 3 by 5 inch cards. And basically, I've got the speeds here from 35 up to 90 miles per hour. Um, the bolt is only capable of 94 miles per hour. It's electronically limited. And there, of course, there's two variants, a 60 kilowatt hour and a 65 kilowatt hour battery pack. And I'm considering that you're only going to use 90% of the battery when you're traveling because you don't want to run out of juice on the road, which limits you to 54 kilowatt hours and 58.5 kilowatt hours. So this one here tells you, of course, the time to exhaust the, the power supply. And you would have 358 miles of range in a, um, at 35 miles per hour. But at 70, you've got 184 miles of range with a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. And you have a 299 uh, miles of range with a 65 kilowatt hour battery pack. And over here, I have the power consumption. Remember that 18.61 figure? The actual power consumption is 20.54, and that's the reason is, is the inverter in the car takes quite a bit of energy. Uh, daytime running lights, you got to run the computer, you have to run uh, ancillaries, look, fan, radio, um, various other things, charging the 12 volt battery. So, we've uh, figured it had 95% powertrain losses, and we've added a kilowatt hour for, or kilowatt, excuse me, for load. These are available in laminated cards. I was so jazzed about uh, this, uh, this uh, road load graph, because it was so colorful, I thought it would make a good Christmas tree ornament. So I took the 3x5 laminated card I had, punched a hole up here, and hung it on my Christmas tree. <laughs> so I probably got one of the most unique uh, Christmas tree ornaments out there. This is three road load graph for uh, comparison of, of body forms. Uh, CD equals 
0 0.20, 0 0.25, 0 0.30. This is where the legacy car makers are. Tesla is at 0.23 with their cars, not their truck, of course. So they're slightly better than this. And this is, they could do even better. Um, and you could see the difference that it makes. Um, that's the secret sauce that Tesla really has. I mean, of course, they have better motors and better electronics and stuff like this. Uh, and they all help. But the really big secret for Tesla is a lower coefficient of drag. And I don't know why most of the press doesn't grasp this. Road loads at 100 miles per hour. For CD, 0 0.20, 78 miles per gallon. For legacy car makers, it's only 60. And probably for um, a Tesla, it's around 70. <coughs> Same frontal areas, different coefficient of drags, perform differently. This is a model of a Tesla, which I had Phil make a boat tail for. Now, you got to realize this model is not any bigger than you're seeing it here, just about that big, you know, and uh, so it's kind of crude. And in a full-size vehicle, your boat tail would blend right into the body, and it would stop at the doors here and cover the wheel wells, but that's it. And... Uh, but, again, model-wise, probably only capable of 76 miles per gallon at 100 miles per hour. But with this boat tail, bringing the coefficient of drag down to 0.18 would yield a 30% improvement in performance, 25% roughly. And it would be capable of 100 miles per gallon at 100 miles per hour. And this graph I really like. This yellow line here is the Tesla, basically, 0.232. And 0.292, the very bottom one, would be legacy car makers on a good day. And you can see at 70 miles per hour, we're going from 5% up to the Tesla here at 20%. So the Tesla is 15% better than a legacy car maker on a good day. Uh, and the faster you go, the better this gets. <laughs> you can see. So, aerodynamics is important, especially in electric vehicles. This is a carpet graph. I don't want to get into the weeds on this one. This thing's probably 40 or 50 years old. I just wanted to show you that such things exist. But over here on this side, you have coefficient of drag. Um, let's say you had a 0.3 drag coefficient and you want to see what you're doing at uh, 70 miles per hour. You'd go down this line here to right where it intersects um, 70 miles per hour. Right there, right where I have my cursor. Right there. And you go over and it's taking you about 23 horsepower. But this graph was based on cars back when, well, in this instance, it's 22 square feet of frontal area and 3,400 pounds of car. So cars were smaller and lighter that they were doing this for. I'd like to see a graph more tailored <coughs> towards uh, modern electric cars, uh, more around 4,000 pounds and more around 26 square feet of frontal area or so. These are two decals um, I made up for our 2019 Chevy Bolt. Um, my ancestors used to have tailpipes. Uh, the point of this, of course, is a gallon of gasoline when you burn it only has uh, has 33.7 kilowatt hours of energy, weighs 6.3 pounds, but it produces 19.7 pounds of CO2. And it does that by uh, combining 
its carbon with oxygen out of the air, which weighs more than the carbon. Um, and it produces quite a few other air pollutants also. Electric cars don't do that. And in this one, I what, my first book that I published was called Driving on the Moon. So I was tickled by this idea that an electric car, of course, can be driven on the moon because it doesn't need oxygen for combustion. And there are three electric vehicles abandoned on the moon since the 1970s by NASA. The moon has no air, so aerodynamics really isn't relevant. But on the other hand, electric cars don't need air for combustion. My car could be driven on the moon, technically. And that's it. Um, this will be the next part of the uh, slide uh, PowerPoint.